In this episode, we discuss crankshafts, camshafts, and why 4-liter motors have such problems with pistons. Can we shift gears and uh, maybe talk a little bit about crankshafts? And I know this wasn't your department, but why are there so yeah. many different variations in the crankshaft from a you know, 12 oh. to 6 to 2 counterweight? Oh, is it all weight savings? Pretty much, yeah. It's weight savings, you know, because some harmonics are above, like the real bad harmonic for a 4-liter would be at 5,700 with a lightweight mm -hmm. crank. You don't run a stocker there. If you raced one, you'd have to have a pretty healthy dampener on the front of it. We went through all that with Garth and Charlie's car. We put a bigger harmonic balancer on it. We put one on there. It was too small. It was a small black Chevy V8. Right. You're firing every 90, you know, and this thing... And, and But the thing with the six-cylinder, if you put all the counterweights on it, and you know, and they can be profiled and smaller, and then you yeah. know, lighten up the piston rod and all that stuff, the pin, you can put all 12 counterweights on there. You don't have to use a balancer. So I want you to say that again, because we've got a whole lot of people that are talking about how important having a you know, fluid damper or uh, you know, yeah. some really yeah. expensive balancer is. Um, yeah, right. you don't need it. Because you've got enough. It'll run, it'll run 10 grand all day long. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Yeah. Well, the best balancer I've ever used on a mm -hmm. Jeep or a Pontiac was a uh, Innovators West. Innovators West is all aluminum, it's like CNC. Okay. It's got a zillion little uh, Allen head screws that hold it together. Right. The front plate is it's got a zillion screws going around that thing. Inside that balancer is little mm -hmm. clutch that rub against each other, dampen the harmonic, and it works right. real. Uh, four cylinder, it works great. I mean, okay. you gotta, every year, you gotta take that every balancer, rule. take it off, take it apart, dump off the whole black transmission fluid that's in there after you get done using it, and fill it mm -hmm. back up and put the screws in the RTV it and put the screws back in and torque them all down and you're ready to go for the following year. It's a little friction clutches. It worked great. It was one of the best balancers I've ever used. I recommend them highly. I don't know if they're still in business. Good year if we, if we got that 12 counterweight cranks Correctly profiled and balanced, you don't need to worry too much about about the harmonic damper. But if not on a six cylinder. Weight crank, no, yeah, not on a six cylinder. Six cylinders. If you look at it from the front, you're looking at a triangle. You know, a triangle is like perfection almost. You just gotcha. equal all the way around. It's, yeah, it is inherently balanced. What about the failure modes on the crankshafts? Where do those things break? How do they break? What's the problem? Where do uh, they, they break? break at the uh, number six rod. All the load is right there. It's focused right there. It's going to break right behind the six rod, right there. Right. Right. It's right right. going to break right through that journal. And I don't know if gotcha. you've ever looked at any of them, but that's where you'll generally find it. It, it could break other places, but that's generally where it breaks, right there. Number if you're making a lot of power, it makes a whole lot of sense. That's probably the weakest part in the crankshaft. So. Yeah. Well, everything's going right to that, through that point. All the cylinders are going right through that point. Mm -hmm. Stress the highest, I would say. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a bunch of uh, questions here about camshafts. There's a whole lot of talk about uh, the cams going flat. Friction rubbing them off, rubbing the lobe off, yeah. And well, if you run out of oil, that'll do it. If you overheat the oil, that's more remote. But if you got, you know, if you're running low on oil and you overheat what you got, part of the oil's job is to cool. And that mm -hmm. could damage a bearing, that could cause the cam to go flat. Heat treat can cause a cam to go flat. Heat treat on the lifter can cause it. A lot of guys swear by putting ZDDP in there, the zinc additives. Yeah. Did you use that stuff? Did you use that? Do you recommend it? Uh, yeah, it works. I would recommend it. I wouldn't do, I'd be afraid of it. And um, the other thing is, too, if you if you have a car or a, or a Jeep and you're running it in a four liter, like you've been running uh, petroleum oil, uh, you want to change over to, say, uh, a lighter oil or a synthetic oil. If you've run it a while, everything's kind of warm and broken. You can put that into the synthetic stuff. You can put it in and run it, and it will last longer, and uh, it should be fine. I think the synthetic is just fine. You know, you just have, like, in a, if you put a new camshaft in an engine, you've got to run, you got to break it in. You can't right. just go out and race it. I mean, you got if you got a flat tap at cam, you need to break it in for at least 20 minutes at 2,000 to 2,200 RPM with a light well, spring on it. doing that. Yeah, with a, if you can do that, then uh, it should live as long as the engine. Just give one more thought. Don't take a, a used set of lifters and put it on a new cam. Use a new right. lifter with a new cam load. What about if you got to replace the lifter? You better look yeah. at the cam load because if you, if you damage a lifter, 
especially the face, you know that it's damaging the camo. One goes with the other. I mean, it's just it's it's just going to happen if it's starting to if it's going metal on metal. It's like your knee going going south, and it's bone on bone. You know, you know the engine's in pain, and so are you. Right. <laughs> Not that I'm a doctor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So but, the next uh, big question is, uh, is, and I know, again, it's not your department, but uh, why are there so few cam journals? Uh, yeah, well, that's old technology. And I said, there's going to be a day come that somebody's going to try to race one of these things. And when they do, I said, for production, it's fine. You know, as long as it's like not going over 4,500 RPM, we're fine. Was it just cheaper to make? Because it's not like you don't have the main webs there. The main webs are there. It's just- oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's one of the cost cutting measures of a lightweight engine. They wanted a lighter engine and they wanted to cut weight wherever they could, whether it's a crank, the block, the head, wherever. They would lighten it up until it failed. They'd lighten the block until it failed. They lighten the crank until it failed. The whole nine yards, everything. As long as the yeah, as long as the engine passed their ability a thousand hours, you know, it can cycle go up and down. It would cycle. Peak peak torque, peak power, peak torque, peak power. Constantly until it hit a thousand hours or failed one or the other and then take it apart and look at it and see what failed so this is the, so, the endurance testing you were talking about that's exactly right yeah that's that's where the uh the shock test the, so they call it the thermal shock test they get an engine really hot i mean yeah. hot the, the the manifold's glowing dump all the water out of it and dump cold water into it real fast you would hear and now these rooms are so- basically soundproof rooms that they're in. You can hear the engine running, but I mean, these rooms are like bulletproof, thick wall steel and right. big heavy doors and block, you know, block. And in some <laughs> places they had steel going up the wall oh, because, really? it, you know, sometimes a bouncer would come off and beep, beep, and just ricocheting around in the room. You're watching it go around in there until it falls on the floor. Go to, I, I'd leave it alone. I wouldn't go and pick it up right now. <laughs> the thing is that uh, the durability test, it was brutal. they just do anything. You know, they'd dump the cold water in. And, and if they passed the, the, the thermal shock test and it mm-hmm. made a thousand hours, it was good to go. We're going to go with it. Yeah. That test alone was just... Uh, killer let me see if i got this right so so they would just take the motors they'd make changes mm-hmm. to the motors and then mm-hmm. they would run up this durability test on it and as long as it mm-hmm. made it past the durability test then they carved off yep. you know two extra cam bearings then yep. they're good to go well the only huh. thing they ever had a problem with on the camshaft and the distributor is the distributor gear would be eaten alive yeah that was oh. about harmonics and well the bottom of the uh, the distributor was driving the oil pump. And that's sort of in a big span right there. On the it, well, you know, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Because you could look at the oil pump as a dampener. Because it's moving fluid through there. So it actually could be a dampener. But with the camshaft suspended in thin air right through there. And it's a big gap between the bearings. We tried virtually every material known to man on that distributor gear. Oh, really? And I... Oh, yeah. I was... We tried everything, uh, bronze gear, we tried different processes on iron gears, and they finally did a process. I can't remember the name of the process. That one particular gear, the gear that's actually in the engines today, that mm-hmm. gear that actually lived through huh. durability. And, and if you ever change that gear on that distributor, you're gonna have a bucket full of problems. Oh man, it ate the cam and ate the gear. There was, every gear they tried wouldn't work. And they had a zillion, they right. went through a zillion. They find, finally found this one process, a heat, I believe a heat treating process with a coating that was heat treated into the process. And they did that and it lived. And it actually lived for a long time. You know, it's in a production engines right now. It's, in, it's not a problem, but uh, the harmonic deal is a problem with the cam. Yeah. I gotcha. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that when we talk about race engines. So I'm at the last. Okay question here on the uh, the Q&A about complaints on the 4.0. The last question about this are pistons. So lots and lots of broken piston skirts and uh, lots of complaints uh, about piston flap and, um, yeah, you know, yeah, noisy yep, pistons yep, and things yep. like that. Just yeah, it's not like a diesel. What, what's going on there? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, well, I know a lot about it. I didn't really want to get involved in that. 
they they tried a bunch of stuff of like the offset pin deal. Right. You know, you offset the pin, and it was still mm-hmm. doing it, and they offset it more, and it's still doing it. it Sound like a diesel engine running because it's slapping right. so hard. And they tried tightening it up, clearance, and that didn't work. And then they tried to add clearance to the skirt, and that didn't work. It just made it worse, actually, when they made it a little more clearance. And they were, we're they put, talking yeah, like 3,000. They put coatings on it as well, didn't they put coatings they put on coating, it as well? They put coatings on it, uh, like a molly-based coating. They still had issues with it. Well, as far as the production, uh, they tried a bunch of stuff I know in durability, and it all was failing, like everything was failing. Everything was failing. It still, it still made noise like a diesel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, most times they, uh, most times it seems that their failure points right there on the skirt on the major thrust phase, and uh, yeah. they pick up a crack and remember thinking it could have been the it could have been the source where they were getting the pistons made. I remember looking at the pistons and thinking, man, they've got so many rust spots. Look, they look like boat anchors. The yeah, really they look good. like boat anchors. For, for castings, I mean, they were okay, I guess, but I didn't like them too well. I yeah, thought they kind of the improved ones. on those after a period of time. Mm-hmm. I thought they got better in shorter skirts and stuff like that. They did shorten the skirts. They cleaned up the skirts, which was one of the big issues. Uh, a yeah. lot of the earlier castings had, you know, like I said, jagged edges on it and lots of places for uh, cracks crack to start, start yeah. Yeah. and propagate. So you, you just got to clean that stuff yeah. up. Well, they're just ugly. But yeah, everybody, everybody's got a broken piston story. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. I didn't have that problem, so I'm I knock on wood. In the next episode, we begin talking about high-performance 4.0s.